we've got relationships with about 30 providers of, of battery black mass that we can we can draw on. Um, but you, you got to think we wouldn't be doing it if we weren't making at least 10 million bucks of EBITDA on top of the 40, right? So, you know, as, as a forward multiple on chemical companies today, you know, 10, 12 times EBITDA, we're probably trading at three or four. So there's a real opportunity for us to re-rate at three or four just on the cobalt, add the recycle to that. Um, I, I think I think investors could do well by if they if they believe in our story. My next guest is Trent Mell. He's the CEO of Electra Battery Metals Corp, trading on the TSX Venture under the symbol ELBM and in the United States under the symbol ELBMF. Trent, welcome. Thank you. Thanks for having me. You bet. It's a pleasure. Trent, tell us about building North America's first battery materials park. Yeah, it's been it's been a journey. So we started this company five years ago uh, called First Cobalt. And, and, and the thematic hasn't changed, right? It's all about electrification of, of transportation and what batteries means to our future. Uh, back then, we focused on cobalt mining because most of the cobalt today and for the next little while is coming out of the DRC. Um, and as we started doing it, and we, and we made some good progress. We got a great asset in the state of Idaho that I'm convinced will be a mine at, at one point in time. But um, as the company grew, we acquired a refinery in Canada. And uh, that journey took us downstream to, to mineral processing and to, to convert cobalt into a battery grade. And, and so now in our discussions through 2021 with battery supply chains, the OEMs and, and their battery makers, um, you know, we're, we're seeing that they want an integrated site. They want to see cobalt, nickel, recycling all in one location so that you can take all that material and put it into the precursor, that first step of the battery process, all in one chemical park, save CapEx and save your OPEX. So we rebranded in November as Electro Battery Materials, and we've now articulated this four-phase strategy to get us from being a, a cobalt producer refiner uh, to something uh, a lot more ambitious for North America. You have this park established, ready to go, start processing? This is a, an existing refinery that historically produced cobalt, nickel, and silver, uh, but it wasn't battery-grade material. It was smaller, not battery-grade, but you got about $100 million of infrastructure there, so roads and power, um, uh, tailings and, and buildings and equipment, but um, it just needs to be bigger. And so, oh, and over and above the capex, I guess more important, you got the permits in place, which is which is huge. And so, for us, it's a double the footprint to get. We call it phase one. Phase one is our cobalt production, which is coming this December. Uh, but we've got to, to your point, yeah, 600 acres of land. So we've got ample uh, opportunity here to go from cobalt and then to recycling, and then probably partner on the nickel because those are big facilities. And, and then invite somebody in on the precursor side to, to set up shop uh, adjacent us as well. So where is this located exactly? It's about five hours north of uh, north of Toronto, uh, in the state in the province of Ontario. And you know, you con contrast that to where it's coming today. You know, Japan, Korea, China. Uh, carbon footprint location is uh, is fantastic for the North American supply chain. So your input at this point is coming from a uh, cobalt mine somewhere in Ontario. But what we're doing, we're basically diverting cobalt that currently is coming out of Africa and going to China, and we're bringing it, instead of sending it to China, we're bringing it to North America. Um, and so that's that's the supply chain. And the way the way cobalt is mined today, most of the world's batteries is reliant on cobalt out of the DRC. And as much as we want that to change, I mean, the DRC, it is the, the Saudi Arabia of the EV world, if you will, uh, for, for cobalt. Over time, we see more recycled content coming to market, supplementing that. I think Idaho is gonna play a role, uh, needs a few more years to mature. But uh, we, we've got solutions right here in America that can help reduce that reliance. Who is your customer? Who's going to be buying your output? Uh, I guess that's the big secret, if you will. We're, we're getting close. Um, we've got a backstop trader that'll buy 100%. Trading, I mean, selling the product won't be a problem. We're in deficit. Uh, we're one of two big producers outside of China once we start operating in December. Um, the OEM contracts that we're talking to, uh, you know, the car, the EV manufacturers here in North America, as well as their battery makers. And we're making progress. We've got uh, three parallel conversations. I, I think I know which one will cross. Hard to time, right? These are big companies. And if you look at the investment announcements we've seen over the last year, it's been focused on battery making more recently on the cathode uh, investments. And so they're working their way upstream. And I think our turn will come in the coming months. Describe for us, please, if you would, how does the how does this sort of business flow work? You buy cobalt from China or from DRC, rather, have it shipped here, refine it and then ship it back out, selling it to an end user. Effectively, this company is a chemical company, right? We've, we've still got mi mineral assets that will play a role, but we're, you know, we're staking our future on being that chemical. Think of think of BASF right in Europe, a big producer. They're a big chemical company. They're in North America as well. So if I were to think of our 
if I dare call them peers, they're much, much larger than us, but Umicore and BASF would be what we're aspiring to become. And so, yeah, we buy material from the open market. Uh, I shouldn't say open market because cobalt, you got to be really careful with sourcing. Uh, so we buy from, you know, frankly, the biggest and the best. Uh, and then we sell it on ultimately to uh, to an automaker, but through their supply chain. And those supply chain, and you can see it with Tesla, right? Tesla is getting more increasingly involved in each step of the supply chain. But we do know as an industry, it's pretty... Um, it's pretty disparate, pretty bifurcated. And I think that vertical integration is going to be a, a feature we'll see over the next five years. You know, looking at a cobalt chart, it has essentially increased by 180% since July of last year in price. Um, but it still doesn't have the sort of, like it hasn't done what lithium's done. Lithium's gone up by 5x since the beginning of 2021. And, uh, but it's still, you know, everybody talks about the cobalt shortage. So are you... Is it difficult to secure supply? Do you have to bid? How does that, how does the acquisition process work? Because most of the feed is going into China right now, you think of the supply chain disruptions we've had, right? Whether it's COVID, whether it's microchips, um, that concentration of, of feed into China is not desirable for anybody. Uh, and, and so the fact that we're setting up outside of China is, is helpful uh, to, to everybody. The only other producer of note is Umicor in Finland. And so we're that other player. We'll be 26% of the ex-China market once we're up and running. And so we've had a lot of interest. So the four biggest operations in the DRC are owned respectively by, by Glencore. We've got two of them, ERG and China Mali. And so we're buying from those four big operations. And I would say all of them are, are very keen to see a, you know, just a diversity of, of buyers for their feedstock. It's been sort of bandied about in the media that there is no way to recycle these batteries. And so we've been hearing people talk about it. And uh, so what is the, like, how far are you away from being able to do that? We're close. So if you think of battery recycling, there's really two steps. There's the established supply chain that does the collection of batteries and that any, any and every battery, just like brake fluids and tires, right? There's a, a network of companies that'll go out and collect these batteries and, and do the uh, discharge, the storage, and, and eventually they shred the anode and cathode into what we call a black mass. That's like a powder. This is where we step in. 90%, 90% of material today goes to Glencore's smelter in Sudbury. And it's a pyrometallurgical facility, heat-based treatment where they don't recover lithium. They don't recover the graphite. Um, it's just the nature of the process. And there's a bigger carbon footprint. The, the way of the future, we see this in China, and it'll be this with, the way with us is, is hydrometallurgy. So that's where you take this black mass and with, with an acid leach, you dissolve it into solution and you can extract everything. And so our process will extract cobalt and nickel as the big payable, but also copper, graphite, lithium, uh, manganese is an option as well. Not very payable, but so, so how close are we? We're about, uh, I'd say we're about five months from a demonstration plant. And this is the beauty of our system because it's already built in an existence. We've got the permits. Well, we've got most of the permits, uh, but we've got the tailings. We've got the equipment already in place to do the demo plant because as we build out our cobalt plant, uh, relative to some of the legacy equipment we have there, the, the equipment is a lot of it's kind of on the small side, perfect for the recycle market. And when you think of recycling, right, there's today the, the market is really our laptops, our cell phones, our power tools, because those are the batteries that are coming into the into the scrap heaps, if you will. EVs are still a few years away. So there is, you know, you got to stage this. Uh, the beauty with today's supply, high cobalt content, the supply of tomorrow and batteries is going to be high nickel. So the flow sheets will have to adjust. But the most valuable metal in the battery today is that cobalt. So not a bad not a bad footprint. We think we could be commercialized in 2023 on the cobalt. So that's, you know, that'll add to the EBITDA that we're projecting on the, uh, on the cobalt. So cobalt in 20, well, late, late this year um, into next year. And, and then the recycling uh, within 12 months, we think we can commercialize a recycling line. Have you got any sort of uh, projections on, on finances, the economics of this going out into 2022, 23, 24? I mean, we projected um, the production on the cobalt is an easier one to show. We're looking at, you know, 5,000 tons of cobalt in, in phase one, increasing that to 6,500 tons. So that's, you know, 5% of the world market. So a pretty notable 100% of North America, maybe more more to the point. Um, EBITDA of up to 40 million US uh, per annum once we're, once we're fully ramped up. Uh, we haven't given guidance on recycling. We want to run our, run our tests and, and, and basically size the equipment, decide how, how big we make the circuit. We've got um, I guess we've got relationships with about 30 providers of, of battery black mass that we can we can draw on. Um, but you, you got to think we wouldn't be doing it if we weren't making at least 10 million bucks of EBITDA on top of the 40, right? So, you know, as, as a forward multiple on chemical companies today, you know, 10, 12 times EBITDA, we're probably trading at three or four. 
So there's a real opportunity for us to re-rate at three or four just on the cobalt, add the recycle to that. Um, I, I think I think investors could do well by if they if they believe in our story. So you're developing a cobalt mine in Idaho. Is there a lot of cobalt supply from the mining side coming up in the future? Yeah, the the Idaho, we call it the Idaho Cobalt Belt. It's a unique geological feature worldwide, very unique. You don't you don't often get primary cobalt deposits. Uh, cobalt typically comes out of silver, sorry, out of, out of nickel mines or out of copper mines. And Idaho, it's the other way around. It's mostly cobalt with a healthy amount of copper as a byproduct. So we've got ourselves in Jervois that are developing assets, but I see a lot there. I see a lot of high-grade underground assets across that belt, which spans about 80 kilometers. You'll, you'll start to hear more and more about it. The, the U.S. You know, U.S. has always been challenged from a permitting perspective. It feels like for critical minerals, that's going to get a little easier. We're on private land, so we've got that advantage. But, you know, what, what could Idaho produce as a, as a belt? I mean, I think you could get five or 6,000 tons a year comfortably out of that belt. Um, ourselves, Jervois, and, and, and maybe another player. Uh, we're, we're still some years out. We're probably five years out from production. Um, I love the belt because it's in America, right? It's a critical mineral right here on our continent. Um, it's, it's not yet ready for prime time. We get, frankly, we don't get a lot of value because we're so focused on the refinery. I think our market valuation is driven off of that. Um, but, but there's definitely, definitely lots that can be done by us and others in that belt. Okay, Trent. Well, that's a great introduction to the company. Fascinating story. We'll have you back soon. I appreciate your time today. Thanks for joining me. Yeah, thanks for the opportunity. Take care. You bet. Bye for now.